Hello, I'm Richard with ev for You Custom Conversions. And welcome to another video series. And in this series, we're going to talk about uh, products that we've kind of uh, put through the test over the years using our 1974 Volkswagen Carmen Ghia. It has been a good test bed for testing motors and controllers and some other components. And so we've got another update on uh, components based on its latest configuration. But let's, uh, let's back up and kind of give you uh, the big picture of why it's a good test bed and uh, some of the components that we've tested uh, along the way. So join us as we uh, look at uh, what works and what doesn't work. Well, this is our 1974 Volkswagen Karma Ghia. And for the last three years, we have been using this vehicle as a uh, test bed for different uh, products. And a couple of the ones that uh, we've used and uh, uh, decided to move on from have been, for instance, uh, originally this featured uh, 44 of the GBS 100 ampere hour cells. Um, didn't have any issues with them. Uh, they worked, uh, worked fine. The only shortcoming, um, well, there's two shortcomings to the GBS cells that we've experienced over the years, not only in this vehicle, but in others. And that is that they seem to have a, a little greater uh, voltage drop under load, and the uh, lithium iron manganese phosphate chemistry doesn't seem to like the cold. Um, we deal a lot with heat here, and heat being the biggest issue and challenge, uh, and not so much cold. But we do get freezing and can get into the high 20s, but that's rare. Um, most of our uh, winter temperatures are in the 40s. And that was enough to notice a decrease in performance on the GDS cells. So we started using, uh, and this is several years ago, uh, before the Carmen Ghia project even, uh, we started using uh, the cowled cells. But we happened to have some GBS cells uh, on hand, and when we did this uh, Carmen Ghia project originally, if you'll remember, this was done in eight days. And so we basically used originally what we had in stock at the time and could put this thing together quickly. So it started out with the GBS cells. Um, we later uh, converted our uh, 74 VW Beetle from lead acid to lithium. And so we used the GBS cells out of the Carmen Ghia and put them in the, the Beetle. And replaced them with 44 of the Cal 100 amp hour uh, cells, which you know uh, we were able to fit in the same uh, pack here or, or uh, containment, and then uh, they've been in there now for quite a while, and are excellent cells, hot or cold. We don't really notice a difference in our climate here at all. The other thing that this vehicle featured originally was the Curtis 1231 air-cooled controller. Um, don't remember exactly how long that lasted, but let me give you a little idea of what these components have to deal with. One, uh, they're in a Carmen Ghia. Uh, you know, the Carmen Ghia as far as motors and controllers go, are probably not the best platform in that there is no cooling air. The, uh, 
there's kind of a dead zone in the back of these cars. Uh, the Porsches and the Bugs, everything else gets more air and better cooling than the poor old Carmen Ghia. They're a pretty nice car, well received, everybody likes it. It's fun to drive, I like it. But we don't get any air in the back end. And so, uh, an air-cooled controller is not the best, but it's what we had on hand and we were curious to see uh, you know, how it would handle uh, 50 miles a day in hilly terrain in our climate zone. And we have uh, a long, hot summer here, and uh, record temperature being 121 degrees, uh, and we have uh, <coughs> well over a month of over 100 degree weather. And it's not uncommon. This car has been driven in 118 degrees, 111. <coughs> Excuse me. And, and that's not uncommon. And it's doing that on the interstate at 70 to 75 miles an hour, up and down grades. Now, these aren't uh, seriously steep grades and not long grades, but it is up and down. <coughs> And so it, it's a challenge on motors and controllers. And the uh, air-cooled Curtis uh, would go into cutback a lot of times about a mile out from the shop on a return on like a 25 mile round trip uh, where it's being pushed uh, and coming back is, is we're climbing more than not coming back. There's an elevation increase of a few hundred feet um, overall. And so uh, the Curtis, about a mile out on our last grade, would sometimes go into a thermal cutback. And you would notice the drop in power. And so we added a, 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 a chill plate for it and a, a cooling system. So here's an example of the Curtis 1231. This is the 1231C-8601, the 144 volt uh, version. This is a 500 amp controller, but it's only 500 amps um, for, you know, two minutes. And, uh, and then, you know, it cuts back. The, uh, the issue is it's dissipating its heat, mostly through the base here through a heat sink. And so uh, when you don't have any airflow, that compounds your problem. And so the Carmen Ghia without the airflow with an air cooled controller in hilly terrain in a hot environment, how long would it go? Well, it went, uh, it went over a year, but it, it finally gave up the ghost. And it did so rather quietly, just going down the road, it just quit. No more power. But before we got to the point where it died, because of the issues with it uh, uh, going into thermal cutback uh, towards the end of the journey on the, on the hottest days, we added this uh, chill plate to it. And that made a difference. It never went into the thermal cutback anymore. And I think it truly, uh, well, it bought us some performance, which was nice. But it uh, probably bought us some, uh, some time, some longevity on the thing. So, you know, better off to start off with this um, type of setup. But, again, in the environment that we're in, this is... Uh, it's just not enough. So we went to the next, uh, next step up, and that is a factory con you know, a controller with factory liquid cooling. Let's take a look at that. So the next, uh, the next step was to go to the Evnetics controller. We went with the uh, Soliton Junior. This is a liquid cooled controller. There's the lines here. There's a radiator, I mean a reservoir, 
There's a pump back here. Um, we have a radiator and a couple of fans. We have uh, a cooler that is kind of underneath that is catching some airflow underneath. And then we have a Durali cooler that's mounted above the transaxle that has a fan on it. And so um, when you turn on the key, the pump comes on, the fans come on on the radiator, and uh, then we have a switch on the dash for those hotter days, we can switch on the Durali uh, fan. And, you know, that's more cooling capacity than we've put on any other vehicle. Uh, just has never been necessary. Like I said, this is the Carmen Gias are kind of a unique uh, bird. They're, they're the, the buses, the VW buses, um, uh, tend, tend to have the same problem. Um, even the Porsche 914s don't get a lot of air. We've had, uh, you know, uh, larger cooling systems on those also. But back to the Carmagia, you know, it, it, it is as good a test bed as any for these uh, uh, cooling scenarios. And so even with a, a decent cooling system, um, and it's, you know, it's kind of a, an issue also in that, you know, your radiators and everything aren't going to be in the, in the um, airflow like you would with a front engine vehicle. So anyway, after a little more than two years, the Soliton Jr. has given up the ghost also. Um, and again, it went peacefully also. Um, I just pulled away from a, a uh, stoplight and in the middle of the intersection, it went hiccup and that was it. <laughs> kind of embarrassing. At least the Curtis uh, did it on a uh, on a back road, and nobody else was uh, was there to, to see me, uh, and I was able to push you know uh, uh, coast off to the side. This I had to push out of the intersection, and it was an intersection that was a slight grade, so <laughs> it wasn't an easy push even. So anyway, uh, the issue again is just that even though this is an air and liquid cooled controller. Running in this environment, in this vehicle, just couldn't handle it. And so we'll show you the error report and everything. Uh, it looks as though uh, we lost an IGVT. And so it's a uh, DOA. So what do we have? Uh, to say nice about a component. You know, the air-cooled Curtis, of course, didn't do it. Um, the Avnetics went, went twice as long, but again, gave in. The one thing that's been in the vehicle since it was built is this net gain Impulse 9 motor. This thing has performed very well. This car's been to the Laguna Seca racetrack, uh, Thunder Hill, um, and we've, we've always pushed it. And the, uh, the net gain motor has been great. No, no complaints. Uh, never has gotten, you know, it gets hot, uh, but it's never gotten hot enough to trigger the uh, temperature sensor. Um, and it's never missed a, a beat. But we've given it a little bit of help here too. Uh, with this uh, modified Garrett supercharger adding uh, some uh, cooling air volume through the motor uh, seems to have worked. Like I said, when everything else has failed and, and we've had multiple things fail, this setup with the uh, net gain has uh, worked flawlessly. So, what's next?
Well, not quite sure yet. We're looking at a couple scenarios and just haven't decided how, whether or not we want to go a little more radically or just do the next logical step up. And so we'll let you know. But what we are going to do is we're going to offer for sale uh, the components that are in, in the vehicle now. And uh, the components we're talking about are the net gain Impulse 9 motor, the uh, Garrett uh, cooler, the uh, Rebirth Auto adapter coupler, and the Evnetics controller. Now everything else is in, you know, uh, perfect working condition with the exception of the Evnetics. And so we're going to have the price reflect that. It is repairable. It's, uh, it's not, uh, you know, beyond repair. And maybe we'll pull the back off and, and, and take a look at the the innards for you, but uh, we'll we'll put that up on the website. Um, so in this series, we're going to um, remove these components and give you a little close-up view of them, um, and then uh, we'll of course show the installation of what we replace this with. So we're going to need uh, an adapter, a motor, and a controller. All the rest, the cooling system, uh, the throttle, everything else will stay. And the nice thing about our setup here is that we can replace these things and, and, and not have any issues. This, uh, this plate, uh, five bolts, and it comes off, and we'll remove this, <clears throat> put the new one on, and bolt this back into place. Quite simple. Four bolts, and our motor comes out. We're replacing the adapter <clears throat> coupler setup because an idiosyncrasy of the, um, the um, Impulse 9 is that it takes a, it has a different mounting uh, setup than the warp 9 and most of your <clears throat> motors out there whether you go with the uh, the high performance electric vehicle system setups um, you know and a lot of others use that same uh, spec <clears throat> for the motor mounting and so um, we use a different adapter for the Impulse 9. So that's why we're including it um, when we sell it because we won't be able to reuse it because odds are we're going to use a motor that has a different mounting face and this one won't be reusable. And so I think that's it for the introduction of this series. Hope you stay with us and uh, we'll uh, in our next episode we'll be removing these components and we may or may not tell you what we're going to replace them with we'll just have to wait and see i, I don't know the answer yet so i can't tell you <laughs> but anyway hope you stay with us thanks for watching see you next time